Alright guys, so welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, super fascinating video today. We're going to react to a white Canadian convert to Hinduism. He now goes by the name of Shiva Kailash Shambino. I reacted partially to him on one of my live streams. He's a follower of Sadhguru, which is one of the greatest scammers of our time, directly employed by the World Economic Forum, further pushing the depopulation agenda by people such as Bill Gates, Klaus Schwab, and the Great Reset. And as already mentioned, he's a Canadian living comfortably in Canada, which has, by the way, a huge Hindu influx anyways. He probably likes that a lot. But today he's going to talk about why Islam scares him. So for us Muslims, it shouldn't be too surprising that a mushrik is scared by Islam. Anyways, guys, before we jump into the video, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Islam is the only religion that scares me. Islam scares me. Genuinely, okay? I swear to God, I'm not uh, exaggerating here. It's not clickbait. I'm scared of Islam and I'm scared of Muslims. Scared. Good. You know, meaning like, if they're approaching you on the street, unless he's a kind man, kind individual, oh, okay, you're just a nice man. But the idea of that, uh, those ideas, they frighten me. And some people that choose to follow these ideas, they also frighten me, okay? Now, I'm Very protected. Good. This is actually a beautiful proof for Islam because you have a man there sitting with idols in his background with pictures of his so-called gurus. So he is practicing polytheism. Of course, Hindus will claim otherwise. They will say that they have one ultimate God. But nevertheless, it is, of course, polytheism that they practice. And naturally, the polytheist is scared of the monotheist, the pure monotheism that is only found within Islam. Here by freedom of speech, I'm not telling you what to believe, not to what not to believe. You believe whatever you want, as long as you're kind, compassionate, and you're not hurting others. You want to believe in Santa Claus? That's it. You go right there. You believe strongly whatever you want to believe, as long as you're not hurting anyone. We'll protect your right to believe. We'll protect your right to practice whatever you want, unless you're hurting others. You're hurting others? Sorry, we got a little bars for you. Uh, jail cell, it's called. You, you belong there. Yeah, ultimately, he just exposes himself as an ultimate liberal, of course, because this is liberalism 101. You can believe whatever you want to believe as long as you don't hurt anybody. And if you believe something that we might not agree with, then we gonna hurt you. You're gonna end up in a jail cell for your radical beliefs. But in a country of free speech, you should be allowed to say everything. Isn't that the truth? However, that is, of course, not the case. When you look into countries such as Canada, this is where he comes from. You have very limited free speech, of course. You can only agree with what the agenda proposes. You can be pro ABCDEFG mafia. You can be pro parties, alcohol, degeneracy. No worries there. You can be pro toxic foods that will destroy your health. But when it comes down to the pure worship of God, where you want to allow only good and actually actively fight evil, you become a terrorist, of course. And this is why he is scared of that. Because Islam came to clarify all the falsehoods. And therefore, yes, as Muslims, we do believe that worshipping idols, pagan statues like you in the background, is of course wrong. And hence, he is very, very scared of that and doesn't agree with it. Quite the opposite, he is living in a secular Christian country, if you will, LARPing as a Hindu, and he's making use of this country's constitution. He's not appealing to Hinduism whatsoever. He's appealing to liberalism, and he's praying to his overlords to save him from the evil, evil Muslims. So, I know we may be thinking, oh no, Islam is a peaceful religion. Oh, really? That's news to me. The results really don't seem to show that, based on the actions that people are performing, in alignment with this name. Hey, we're doing this because of this, and we really need to do this. You know, I tried reading the Quran ones, because I want to be, want to be educated with with everything, with all religions, and primarily I want to speak their language, and I want to understand from their perspective, but most importantly I want to uh, know what, what the words are in that book so that I can debate anyone, 
And after reading a few sentences, I'm like, oh my God, this is, this, what, what am I, what is this? What is this? Is this illogical? It doesn't make any logical sense. No, spirituality or religion shouldn't make logical sense. It should be felt in your heart. Yeah, no. Okay, you're not going to- It's quite amazing how he speaks about logic, but of course he doesn't give any logical reasons of why Hinduism is more logically coherent and Islam is not. Moreover, he alleges that Islam is not logical whatsoever and you have to feel it with your heart as if Islam was Christianity or Buddhism or Hinduism. Quite the opposite. If you really would have read the Quran, you would have found that the Quran is asking you to reason, to ponder, to reflect, to truly seek for yourself until you find the truth. It's not a religion of blind faith as so many others. Quite the opposite, of course. We propose that if you would use logic and reason, you would sincerely then conclude that the only logical explanation for existence is the existence of one supreme being, i.e. God or in Islam, Allah. But we're talking about one ultimate reality, one ultimate existence, and this one ultimate existence is indivisible. It is only one, uniquely one, and hence we conclude that we should not pray to any other beings that are mere creations of that one supreme being. But I'm sure you know all of that because you read the Quran, didn't you? To follow anything that's illogical. Anything that's illogical, you're not going to follow unless you're super confused. It doesn't work. It has to be lo it has to have a logical foundation. <laughs> then you can start to investigate. Your human your human mind won't allow you to follow things that are illogical. Anyways, exactly. it's still I mean, first and foremost, I would absolutely disagree that humans do not follow something that is illogical. Of course, most humans follow something absolutely irrational, absolutely illogical, and you yourself included, of course. I watched another video of his on my live stream, and there he talked about how he is a vegan. How is veganism logical from any viewpoint? If you take the atheistic perspective and you simply believe in evolution, then by default you have to believe in survival of the fittest and then you have to conclude that we are the apex predator on top of the food chain and hence we evolved into omnivores, highly carnivorous omnivores of course, and hence we should eat meat. That is the logical conclusion. If you look biologically at it, you will confirm this. You will see that our digestive tract has the pH level somewhere around cats and dogs. We don't have the digestive tract. We don't have the hind guts like herbivores do. We have canines like carnivores. We have the eyes up front and not on the side. So biologically speaking, we are carnivorous animals, right? So why would you then eat plants? plants that have been cultivated by human beings for you, that you need to excessively prepare and cook for you to be able to extract some sort of nutrition out of. That is not logical, that is not rational whatsoever. The logical conclusion here would be to eat meat, of course. And then, of course, if you look into Hinduism, there are many, many questions I would have. <laughs> it just truly makes me wonder when I look at Hindu practices such as cow urine drinking, sexual rituals that sometimes imply bestiality as well, praying to certain male and female gods that have affairs with each other. And then ultimately, and this truly takes the cake for me, swimming in the Ganges River that is absolutely infested with feces and urine. So please tell me, how is that logical? What kind of reasoning did you use in order to convert to this religion? Please enlighten us. Misconceptions and contradictions and written a thousand years ago or more by people that didn't really understand anything. But hey, some man told them to do it. Okay, good job. <laughs> the arrogance. So now he uses time as an argument against Islam. He says that has been written thousand years ago and they had no idea. Okay, if you look into the Vedas, they've been written 2,500 to actually even 5,000 years ago. And you wouldn't make the same claim about those people, right? Why did those people know more than the people 1,000 years ago? And what a why do I say it scares me? Because I recently had a conversation with this man. Maybe you're watching me. Shout out to you, okay? And I'm watching him and I'm reading his energy and he's telling me, talking to me. And I just felt an instance of the, the quality, the essence <laughs> of this thing that he's talking about. And it, it, it frightened me, it scared me, it bewildered me. Oh my God, wow. That, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's not, it's it's not so friendly what you're doing. It's not friendly, okay? The actual essence of what you're doing is not a friendly thing. 
obviously. The, okay. the, the, Again, as I said already, in Islam we find the concept of fighting evil actively and doing what is good, right? Good under the eyes of God, of course. And so therefore, to give you a more secular example, because you already spoke about prison, if you look into the West, you have prisons, right? And if you have a person that commits something evil, at least evil in the eyes of the government, then the government will use force. It won't be friendly whatsoever, and they will remove that person from public life. They will put him into a jail cell. Right, So they are fighting evil and they're doing what is good. However, they do that by a secular standard. They tell you what is right and what is wrong. And there are, of course, many things problematic with such worldviews because ultimately you simply have people in power that will decide what is right and what is wrong. But what is truly right and what is truly wrong? We believe in divine revelation. We believe that God revealed to us what is right and what is wrong. And actually, matter of fact, so do you, of course, as well. You subscribe to Hinduism, and therefore you do believe in certain revelation from God, from your gods, and this is where you derive your morals from, quite clearly. And therefore, yet again, within Islam, if we have people that are committing evil and they are against pure monotheism, of course, we won't be friendly to them. Why would you be friendly to a criminal? Why would you be friendly to a racist? Why would you be friendly to a murderer? You don't have to be friendly to such people. You have to do what is right. You have to do what is just. The results speak for themselves. You can't hide the results. What, there's a billion people doing this? And uh, look at all the wonderful things that are done in this name. No, all religious people are doing this. Or religion just like this. Some people are good. Some people are bad. It doesn't There's give any examples. Beings. Oh, really? Oh, really? Let's see the Buddhist crusades. Show me. Where are the Buddhist uh, monks that are being pushed around from place to place because they do inappropriate things with children? Where is that? Where are the <laughs> Buddhists? Thailand. In? This is so ridiculous. I live in Thailand and we have one scandal after the other with Buddhist monks being high on meth, child homosexuality and all kinds of other degenerous practices that you can find in the Buddhist monasteries themselves. But moreover, he wants to say that Buddhism is of course so pacifistic and nothing is happening with the Buddhists. They are all so nice. Man, do you have any idea about the real world? As I said, I live in Thailand and I've been to Burma, Myanmar, and there you have the Rohingya Muslims who are heavily oppressed and genocided by the Myanmar Buddhists. Buddhism over there developed into Buddhist nationalism as well. And the rise of Buddhist nationalism, particularly under the influence of radical monks like Ashin Viratu, has exuberated the animosity towards Muslims. Some hardline Buddhist groups, such as the Mabatha, is actively persecuting Muslims and moreover since 1982 the Burmese Buddhist government actually passed a law in which they excluded the Muslims of the ethnic groups of Myanmar. And the same can be of course said for Sri Lanka or yes India as well. Hindu Twa. You have Hindu and Buddhist nationalists that are persecuting Muslims, that are genociding Muslims. But no, those religions are always all so peaceful and all so friendly and it's only evil, evil Islam. If you look into Islam, you will see that the greatest majority of Muslims is to be found in Indonesia. And tell me the last time you heard that Indonesians are oppressing anyone. Invasions, huh? Show me. Where are the Hindu I invasions? I just did. Hey, in the name of Hinduism, we're going to go into... I just Well, did. actually, that's kind of being done now a little bit. But uh, <laughs> an insignificant number insignificant the number. big god ideas it's actually not true at all as i said if you look into the muslim oppression in india india needless to say has pretty much the highest population on this planet next to china and therefore the muslim minority in india is still absolutely humongous if you look into the 2011 census and of course since then it has only grown you had 172.2 million muslims in india yeah, no significant numbers whatsoever. A significant number. <laughs> the big idiot. God ideas, Christianity and all the, the fun ones, they're responsible for the most amount of torture. Ooh, oh, yeah. look at that. Oh, the Christians are coming and all the other people are coming because they want to 
to prove to themselves that their idea is good. How do we do that? We got to make sure that everyone believes this. Hey, do you believe this too? Okay, we're doing the right thing here. Yeah, go and conquer more lands. Oh, conquering yeah, is good. It, it means you're a man. Yes, I hope uh, a man goes and conquers you because it's a really good thing to be a... Uh, you know. No, it's not good to conquer. Stop worshipping these men. The, what the absolute most idiot. It's so pathetic and absolutely baseless. Of course, it has no fundament in reality. He's living in Canada. Your country exists because of colonialism. You're enjoying the fruits of colonialism, of conquering. You're sitting there recording a video talking to the world from your little bubble in Canada. A horrific man you on planet Earth. For imbecile. some reason, they're a it's little insane. bit idolized. Maybe it's because a long time has passed away. Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan. I know you're thinking, oh, uh, I understand. For you to be able what? to do that, you have to have what such am I massive uh, amounts of testosterone. Maybe uh, that's what you're admiring. But my friend, if you were living in that time, even if you were on his side, probably you wouldn't be like, oh, this is such a great man. Yeah, he's responsible for more bloodshed than anyone else. Oh, so good, so good. No, especially if you're on the receiving side, you, you would be Ill. wishing and praying to God that this man didn't exist anymore. All right? Don't you agree with me? Yes, you see what I'm saying? Good job. No, I don't. He's so full of himself and passive aggressive like a female that comes partially through the vegan malnourishment, obviously. You see that quite often that vegans get very, very snappy and hangry. You cannot really blame them because they don't get proper food in their diet and hence they get very, very angry. However, what he's talking about there is, of course, again, absolutely irrational and illogical. It is a reality in this world that people will go to war, will conquer. Yes, this happened. And he is enjoying the fruits of it. As I already said, this is why he lives in Canada. If you're so much against colonialism, against this oppression, just move out of the West and go to a country that doesn't have such a history. Start with that. Or go to India if you like it that much. But to propose the idea that the followers of, for example, Alexander the Great did not appreciate him as a man, as a leader, is of course absolutely ridiculous because they most certainly did, otherwise they wouldn't have fought under him. Actually, if you look into the history of Alexander the Great, you absolute smarty pants, you will see that Alexander the Great had actually Indian soldiers in his army. <laughs> So anyways, it's absolutely ridiculous. Of course, men, especially back in those days, would follow competent men. And therefore, of course, they adored their leaders and they were willing to fight for their leaders. And this continues to this very day, of course. He's simply removed of reality. Moreover, he gives you this absolutely ridiculous example of that if you would be on the receiving end, you wouldn't like it. Yeah, duh, of course you wouldn't like it. Just as the indigenous people didn't like it in Canada when they got conquered. But now you have your society and again, you're enjoying the fruits of it. So it's time, my friends, to think a little bit logically with your life. Hey, don't you think it's time? <laughs> like 2,600 years, 2,000, like 3,000, 4,000, whatever, how many years it's time? we've started, we've been doing things on this earth. We've been, yeah. uh, humans have been alive for much longer. But uh, recorded history, isn't it time for us to think logically? Like, hey, why don't you just use a little bit of a, your gray matter and start to investigate? Mm. Hey, one plus one equals this two. Is, is it two? Yes, okay, we've discussed this, we investigate. Okay, that's two. Mm. Hey, but someone comes around, A plus B equals 96,845 mm. million. Mm. No, buddy, that's not really how it works. Uh, you shouldn't be really doing stuff uh, because, you know, your intelligence isn't set right. You shouldn't You're be stupid. active in the world. You're dumb. Obviously, you're right? Pleb. If you're a human being, your intelligence you're isn't set right. I'm you're going to be destroying Listen things for sure, me. guaranteed. You're going to be causing all sorts of havoc to the planet and to other human beings. And the results oh. speak for themselves. I'm not talking to Martians here. Or I'm not talking some... What? what Which do you mean? results, are though? Here. What oh, are you really? talking about? It's so utterly insane that he just keeps on repeating. You have to use logic, etc. But he doesn't give any examples whatsoever. You are a Hindu. You base your knowledge, at least partially, on the Bhagavad Gita. Right In the Bhagavad Gita, as far as I remember, because I read it as well back in the day, you have Arjuna and he is going to war, but he doesn't want to go to war. Right Then you have Krishna, which is a god within Hinduism as well, and he advises him that it is very, very needed indeed to go to war. Right, He explains the necessity of it because of the karmic cycles, etc., you name it. So even within Hinduism, within the core teachings of Hinduism, you have the theology of war. 
So now you stand here talking about pacifism, but what do you base it upon? On liberalism, on your personal views, most certainly not on Hindu scripture, because even your scriptures are actually pro-war. Maybe they're perfect if you're living in Canada like me. Pretty much things are perfect here in this Canada, in this uh, land. Things are Pretty peaceful, much, huh? moving oh. along gently. Uh, lots of uh, everyone's kind of friendly and nice. Everyone wants to help you, oh. and uh, it's going along pretty good. But if yeah. you just go a little few parts now, of this world right? or the majority of the planet, some people, a lot of people can't even eat. Okay, the, the, you really you don't you, say. That's amazing. Could that be but due it, to the West? Oh, right, guys, and this is it. I'm going to cut it off here because this guy is so extremely incoherent. It is mind boggling, truly. He just confirmed there yet again that he lives in Canada and everything is also oh nice and also oh peachy and they have all the resources ultimately. Where do those resources come from? The West has exploited the so called third world and this is why those people are starving, right? They built your country through wars, through conquering. This is why you now live in a oh, quite peaceful surrounding and this is exactly what brings us back to this graph that hard times create strong men and strong men create good times but then the good times create weak men just as the guy that we see here in this video and then the weak men create hard times again and guess what the next step is war and as you can see the west is clearly falling we already saw tremendous unrest in the west civil conflict civil war you could name it as well but all of that ultimately will lead to war because history is repeating itself and you see the exact same pattern in the west right now i'm really keen to see how he will react when hits the fan and when times get serious again i don't think he can lob as a hindu when it becomes very critical again in the west but that being said to sum it all up here he didn't say anything about islam he simply kept on complaining about how Islam is irrational, illogical, without giving you any type of proof of it being irrational, without giving you any proof for Hinduism. He simply gave you his opinion. And hence... Yeah, well, you know, that's just like... Uh your opinion man all right guys but this is it for today if you liked it leave a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already check out the links in the description box below to further support my work and as always may god bless you all much love and peace <laughs>